Hello and welcome to the show. It's a day of big FDI push. The government has opened the FDI floodgates, easing norms for all the dollars to flow into the country. And it's not just one, but seven sectors which really stand to benefit from the new norms which paved the way for the foreign investors to pump in money into the country. While the government maintains that this move is in keeping with the whole objective of ease of doing business, one also realizes that these moves come at a time when certain foreign investors did raise concerns over the stumbling blocks in the earlier policy. So will these measures really serve the purpose and will all the foreign money finally start pouring in? My colleague Maria Shakil caught up with the Commerce Minister Nirmala Sitaraman and started by asking her whether the move was to allay fears over the possible slowdown in the government's reform push. Well, it is not so much to reassure the investors, it, but it is more for the commitment that we have made that India shall be an open economy. It will be a place where pe people can do business and do business with great ease and make sure that the stated policy of the Prime Minister, that it is the manufacturing sector which can provide the necessary employment for our growing youth. And it is keeping in line with that manufacturing policy. The Make in India was announced. Make in India was announced as an initiative to correct a lot of things in this country. And everywhere he went, he gave confidence to the international investors that he is reforming the Indian economy, making it vibrant, and ridding it of corruption. So naturally, to build an open economy, we have taken a lot of measures, as a result of which you get the investments. Ma'am, you have said that this will create, give a major impetus for creation of jobs and uh, infrastructure. Are we looking at some kind of timeline as far as creation of jobs is concerned? See, the sectors that we have opened up, about which today we are talking, are different in different uh, ways. Some are capital intensive, some are capital intensive together with a lot of technology. Some of them are going to help in such as, you know, private sector security or retailing. These sectors can, with a few months' time, create a lot of jobs. Whereas some investments will take about a year because it, the gestation time that they take, the time lag for creating jobs, will naturally be different for them as compared to many other sectors. Ma'am, I'm going to talk about certain sectors now because there are certain Indian defense companies um, who are unhappy perhaps because they feel that this has this will lead to uh, you know greater competition with global manufacturers are you trying to ensure some kind of safeguards for indian manufacturing companies in the defense sector well if you look at it in a different way first of all the indian manufacturers for instance for defense sector that you're referring to first of all will be able to access more investment investable funds isn't that an advantage for them so if they were competitive enough, if they were bringing in certain innovative technologies, if they were going to produce things which are useful for defense, this policy will enable them to have more joint venture partners or even to get investments from abroad. Ma so it is not going to hurt them if they only are competitive enough and they're going to be able to serve the Indian uh, demand in defense procurement. But ma'am, by doing away with that state of our technology, that the, you know, the, you have almost opened the entire sector for 100% um, FDI in defense. Do you think it is because the global players who were trying to or who had shown interest in entering India were unwilling only because they were, oh, there was no, no, no control? No, no. Uh, I'm glad you asked this question, Maria, because state of art, cutting edge technology, modern technology, where several terminologies being put in the policy earlier. As a result of which, people were sitting in various departments, understanding, redefining, interpreting each one of them. What is state of that? What is cutting edge? They spent time, after, hours after hours, defining, reinterpreting them, and as a result of which, proposals which were coming in were also being, you know, uh, delayed. What we have now done is not to do away with that requirement. There were several terminologies being used. We said, oh, oh, let there not be confusion. We used the word modern. Modern was there before, even if it is, it is there even now. So modern technology in the place of modern, state-of-the-art, cutting-edge, falna, jimkana, we've removed so many words and said, just use one. 
let it be simple coming to the aviation sector now ma'am by keeping that fdi of uh, foreign carriers at 49 percent don't you lose out on potential fdi because tiny fernandez of air asia has just said that she would like to go beyond 49 percent for instance see the point is we've announced uh, aviation policy only a week ago what we've now done is to come up with the FDI policy which is going to give a boost to that aviation policy. It is going to help bring level playing field. It's going to give more access to investable funds for those companies which want to improve their fleet. As a result of which we think the policy which said unconnected, distant, far removed towns where even an A strip is available, will be brought down to the aviation map of this country. Ma'am, what about the India's national carrier? Will they be forced in many ways to shape up? Well, they are attempting to shape up, and you know that they, for the first time for in several years, made operating profit. So I think it will do good to the Air India also. Ma'am, how will opening up of FDI in pharma help? There is a lot of interest, because pharmaceutical sector in India has reached global standards. There is a lot of company uh, who are receiving interest for greater participation by investors from abroad. India has emerged as the supplier for global generic drugs. Our production capabilities can be improved if only we can have greater funds coming from somewhere. Whether the Indian uh, fund raising uh, talents that could exist within the investors can be coming of use very well. If not, they can at least have, through this policy, an access to funds which can come from abroad. So I expect Indian pharmaceutical sector, whether you're talking of brownfield or greenfield, will benefit from this policy. Ma'am, uh, there is, the experts are in fact saying that uh, the single brand retail policy was tweaked because of Apple. Well, is that are never made for one company. Uh, they, is as that many a fair thought? As many number com of companies which want to benefit from this, are very welcome. We don't make a policy for just one company. Let's now also take it across.